building a RAG application doesn't have to be complicated to start with. You can prototype something pretty easily without writing a single bit of code. So stick with me and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So let's start here. This is just a basic document. I just wrote out my idea. The example website that I have is this old one, this killer video, and it's a video sharing website. The thing that I wanna do is add a rag based feature that is gonna let people find new videos. So it'll take a description from somebody like in a chat window, and then it'll go through and say, oh yeah, here's a bunch of videos that are just like that. And it's a similarity search, right? But it has to do the search. And so it has to ask for something and then get it back. And so I just write it up real quick. Now I could use ChatGPT or any of the AIs out there, all the large language models to come up with some of these things. But in this case, I just typed it up. Here's what I want to do. And just think about it like if you're brainstorming with a colleague. The thing that it has to do is it has to ask a user for a description in some sort of a chat window and then get the videos they like back. You know, so like say like they love cat videos, right? So yeah. I'm going to simulate this whole thing using one of the, uh, there's multiple playgrounds. So for instance, you don't have to use chat GPT to do this. We want to simulate what it's like interacting with the LLM and see what happens. That's the thing that we want to do is like do a search and then come back with some data. And then how are we going to prompt the LLM to like uh, when the retrieval happens, we augment that generation. Well, the generation, what does the generation look like? The G part. And it sometimes is playing around with the prompts. And so we can simulate how this would look and we can play around with those prompts to make it happen. So quick example here, I, you know, what I'm expecting is that if I do a similarity search, Hey, here's all the things that I'll get back. So a couple of things to think about here. So I'm gonna, I can use this, I can use just the, this, Hey, you're a great marketing bot. Any prompt is going to have the best prompts are going to have something that will be like a role. Hey, you are this. It will have instructions, do that. And then in some cases, in most cases though, an example. So that, that usually solidifies what's going on. In this case, because this is a retrieval thing, what, I've, what I'm simulating here in this doc is I just made up a quick table. I actually told JetDPT to create this table for me. Uh, so I'm using all the AIs for this, but just this, this is a retrieval. Like, all right, here's, I asked for a top 10 similarity for cat videos, and this is what it came back with. Okay, so let's simulate that. So I'm going to copy all of this business right here. Copy it all the way down. Cool. Copy. So this is OpenAI's playground. I'm just going to put some stuff in here and see what happens. I'm going to take that prompt that I created in the doc, and I'm just going to act like it just did a retrieval, right? So, hey, you're a great marketing bot. Good job. And I'm asking it to take this. Oops. Spelled that wrong. I'm going to ask it to take this table of data. And that's the thing. I'm going to be playing around with my formatting too. Do I need to put it in JSON? Or is it happy with just tab delimited or a dict or something like that from a Python app? Whatever, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit the submit button on this. Here, I'm going to move myself over here so I'm not in your way. All right, let's, let's see what happens. Now, what it's doing, and now it's using GPT-4, it's coming back with like, hey, here are the top videos and like why. And what's cool is I'm, I'm playing around with this, this idea that it's gonna do some generation. So I, I passed it in like these videos with all these names in it, and I'm playing around with this, with this particular prompt. Now, maybe I don't like that. You know, it's like, well, all right, let's, let's go back and play around with the prompt a little bit. So I'm back here playing around with my prompt. Uh, I should probably change the spelling here. Take the top three videos and explain why the user should go watch these. But let's let's add a little bit. Let's let's take out this part right here. Well, that'll be a that's a prompt we don't need. Let's see. Like I, I want to have it a little more a little more exciting, right? Take the top three videos. Why each you should go see these, and and make it exciting. Be a marketing, marketing bot. Okay. I don't know what it's going to do with that, but see what I'm doing here is I'm playing around with my prompts now. And now that I'm back over here, I can try this again. All right. One more time. Let's see what it has to say about that. There we go. Now it's getting a little crazy. Buckle up cat enthusiasts. There you go. So now what we're getting is much more enhanced now I, this may not be what you want in your rag application but we're still simulating i don't have to build the no code has been written here and that's awesome 
And I don't have to do this with just OpenAI. I know a lot of you want to avoid OpenAI. That's cool. You can do the same thing over here. This is uh, this is on AWS. This is Bedrock, and this is a Claude three Sonnet. And uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Again, and you know, this is the thing. We can take the same prompt and play around with it. Maybe these LLMs are easier. I like if you can find a more low cost LLM, great. And if it gives you good responses, so let's see what Claude has to say. Oh boy, Q's dramatic announcer voice. Well, maybe we can dial that back a little bit. But I, you know, it's funny to me because this is a completely different response, different LLM, different response. And I, this is a little over the top. I'm gonna dial, hey, hey, dial it back here. So on the top here, let's see, I don't wanna do that anymore. Let's not let you be a marketing bot. Let's see what comes back. But see what I'm doing here is I'm playing with the prompt a little bit. I'm taking the same data. The data is gonna come back from the database when you do the retrieval. That's not the problem at this point. That's a, a different problem. But what we're doing with, with the data is playing around with the prompt and see which one makes it better. Uh, if I'm gonna use Claude 3 Sonnet, it's clear that Claude wants to turn this into like a countdown from like David Letterman or something. So, okay, I just wanna do something. You'll see, I would take the top three and explain it. And I would say list them in a bullet, list them with bullets. I can be instructive. And sometimes you have to be instructive. Sometimes it doesn't listen to your instruction. Here we go. There we go. I've done the tweaking. Do you see what I did there? I tweaked and I made it work really well for me. That's awesome. Um, now let's let's go over to our good friends at Google, new Gemini 1.5 and see how that goes. Let's see how Gemini does. We'll start with the one that's like, be a marketing bot and let's see how that goes, right? All right. Now, one thing about Gemini is it doesn't do streaming. It calculates and then it goes blurp. There's your data. And there it is. Oh man, meow -nificent. Yeah, see, this is why we want to prototype because we just don't know what our language models are gonna come up with. Gemini 1.5 Pro, sweet, uh, way over the top. So I even put emojis in there, I, right on. You know, um, I'm gonna take the marketing bot out of there and see what happens. This is, and we can also play with the temperature, things like that, but right now I'm just playing around with it really wants to do meow -nificent. Okay, well, maybe I don't want to use Gemini. <laughs> maybe I do, but I, you can see, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to further refine this. And this is a really great place to start with like a RAG application and thinking about the prompts because ultimately what RAG does is it takes data and communicates with humans and how you communicate with humans is all in the language model. Um, it takes data or information and converts it into human. That's us. And, and how do you want to communicate with them? This completely over the top copy? Okay, maybe this is, forget Netflix, it's time for Catflix. I, man, this is great. You can't even make this up. Anyway, I hope this helps. This is a great way to start. And as you're beginning your journey with AI, think about things in this terms. This isn't just sitting down at a prompt and writing out some code. Sometimes you gotta play around with the tools and the tools in this case are large language models. Have a good day.